and welcome, welcome to a beautiful Celestite Aura Sweep as we celebrate rainbow flags up. Our flag means death season two. <laughs> this is my review. I'm Deandra Views. Check out all my other ASMR Reiki TV reviews and check out DeandraReviewsAtAll.com where I review entertainment for the light it gives. I'm getting really good at selling myself. I don't, I don't know if that's a good thing. Um, our flag means death is coming back October 5th. I got to see the season. Uh, they sent me some screeners and let me say I am very, very pleasantly surprised. I didn't expect the season to kind of plot twist in a way. Um, one thing about our flag means death that has made it so important and so valuable, especially to the LGBTQ plus community, is that this is queer love. This is love of two people that are older, that are brilliantly dreaming again, dreaming of each other. There's just something about this show that is refreshing on so many levels. It's not often that we see a queer couple of age, of age, right? They're just in their 40s, my God. Um, but it's also... It kind of reminded me, I remember when I was reviewing um, Ted Lasso season three, the last season, which is crazy to me, um, people were upset that I was like, Ted Becca is not going to end up together. And at the time I'd seen the screeners and I wasn't, I wasn't trying to spoil as much as I was trying to kind of explain the beauty of that relationship was that it was platonic. And I think it's not easy. I don't find on television too many romantic couples even YA um, romances which I adore you know to all the boys I love Riverdale's crazy miss um, even those shows there's just this feeling of like messiness and we're together but we're not who are we and I think there's something like very Ted Becca about Steed and Blackbeard in the sense of it's just nice to see a couple together that likes each other. And I think that was one of the elements why people wanted Ted Becca to be together. They weren't, it was hard not to want them to fall in love because they felt like good friends. And I don't see that element in terms of romantic partnerships and relationships. Sometimes you're like, they're just like, I love you. And they're very sexually attracted to each other. But the friendship element of true love is so valuable to actually like the person you're with, not just love them. Or it, it can feel as if we're not, if you just love a person but don't actually like them, there's something that feels emptying about it and vice versa. If you like a person but you don't love them, it can feel a little emptying too. You need both elements. And I think often in romantic relationships, we don't see that. But with Blackbeard and Steed, we star be and Taika Waititi, you feel, I love how I say his last name, is so Latina, Waititi. Eh. <laughs> I think with their, their chemistry, you feel these are two people that really like each other. They really enjoy each other. And... There's something about that representation, that element of representation for it to be queer love, but at the same time, so rare in general love and its representation is just so, wow, it's so vibrant, it's so dynamic. And this season, I was just surprised because I, one of the hard parts about being, um, having such a powerful debut is that in some ways, you're kind of screwed. They call it the sophomore slump. You did so well the first round. Can you really carry that energy into two, three, four, five, even nine more? Um, they set the bar so high and it was such a surprisingly rich, loving, virtuous show. And it's about pirates, about gay pirates just stealing and existentializing. <laughs> That's not a word. That's not a word. Um, and I, I think that maybe they were on Twitter because they really leaned into the virtuousness of the first season. That we liked that these, this was a group of people that were compassionate, 
that were sweet, that were funny, that were loyal to each other, that were learning, that were growing. We enjoy that forever, their craziness and their flaws. You felt like these were human beings that were going somewhere, both personally and, you know, in piracy. And I don't know, sometimes I think that the sophomore slump happens with a lot of these shows because they think that they have to lean into like heavy plots or crazy plots or, or they kind of forget that we fell in love with the characters. So it's okay to keep on letting the characters lead and letting their growth being the center as much as, you know, storylines. The storyline is that these are people that are trying to be better trying to do better for themselves, for the people that they love, for the people that love them back. And I felt like this season, they really leaned into that in terms of Steed and Blackbeard, because that's why everybody's coming. I mean, mishaps and misinterpretations have happened. And my God, Blackbeard comes back so toxic. I was so upset. By, he's not just like self-destructive. He's like bad. He's really, really, really bad. I mean, living up to the name. I was like, no. And what was so interesting in, in that element is that you see Steed, much like the trailer, kind of pining over him, which is why I, I chose Celestite. So Celestite is one of my favorite crystals. I think I say that about every crystal. I love crystals. But Celestite is really, really good if you want to open up your psychic abilities, particularly your crown chakra, if you want to start dreaming and having more intuitive visions, but also this feeling of it's very good for the heart chakra and the crown chakra and third eye, like kind of connecting them in terms of dreaming big and dreaming bigger and dreaming the biggest. It's kind of like pushing you to confidently not only trust your gut, but trust that whatever you see for yourself or want to see for yourself, you can actually do. Visions can lead to visualizations that can lead to realities. And this is a magnificent, magnificent um, little aura sweep of a celestite. But back to Steed. I think one of the most fascinating elements of this upcoming season is the question of if somebody makes you feel good, is that good enough for a reason to let go or forget how you see yourself best? Because, I mean, Blackbeard was about to retire and then he goes on auto-destruct. Steed was ready to become Pirate King of the Universe and then he kind of, in his own way, went on auto-destruct as well. And these are two people that met happiness with each other in ways that they've never met with anyone else, in ways that they've never been able to summon for themselves. And it's just, it's so loving and it's so beautiful. And I think the way Taika and co kind of added this nuance of, if you can't feel that love by yourself, if you can't feel that love when you're alone, if somebody that despite all the good feelings they give you is not in alignment with what you best see with yourself are they truly your one do you go on auto destruct without them because you just don't know how to be yourself you don't know how to get to that fantasy version of you is there an element of toxicity is this love or obsession these are kind of the questions you ask as the season progresses and i just i really didn't expect the storylines that came and the character growth, I was really happy. I was very pre pleasantly surprised because I just felt like I couldn't predict. I thought I knew what would happen. And then there were these twists and it was like, oh, this is actually, it felt as cheap as it is, like a very pleasant season. It was so nice, just rich and loving and easy. And the cast, it's so great to see, I think, your last season it ended with everybody yes separated but they got separated right after there was this real connection of we are a team this is us we can make this work and seeing that come back and and develop and flourish into friendships 
that are just so worth watching. And a lot of romances. Love is in the air in season two. Everybody's getting booed up. Oluwande, I believe, is a character's name. He's just so good. Vic Ortiz is back. I mean, everybody, everybody is back. And they're all just giving their best and their funniest. And I absolutely, absolutely adored it. Uh, Ruby Oshian, she is a new character. She absolutely kills it. I think there she is scene stealing. First of all, her voice is fantastic. Her chemistry with certain characters that she's going to be interacting with, along with Spanish Jackie, who I absolutely adore, Leslie Jones, magnificent. They're all back and they're just such fantastic presences. You want more. And I think that's what's so great about season two. I wanted more. And that's how you know there was no slumping. So this is Our Flag Means Death, season two out October 5th. Uh, thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. And check out uh, deandreviewsitall.com to follow my own artist journey. So you can, when I work with Taiko Atiti one day, you're like, oh my God, I remember her. She did Reiki.